However, Louis XVI is still coming from an absolutist system, and as much as he is okay with certain measures of the French Revolution, he doesn't want to stop being king entirely. He doesn't want to give all of his power over. And Louis XVI has always been, has not been too hard to influence during his life. He was under the influence very much of Vergen um, when he was younger, and at this point he's very much under the influence of many of his nobles, who of course do not want to see um, French society rearranged in a way that gives them less power. Um, so Louis XVI does begin to make uh, uh, negotiations with Austria um, that would allow Austria to come into France and fight the revolutionaries and end the revolution and restore Louis XVI to all of his power, restore all the land and all the power to all the nobles um, who have had, had their power and their land decreased. Um, and and as, as pressure is mounting and as people are, are pushing Louis XVI to accept more and more radical revolutionary um, uh, uh, changes, uh, Louis XVI decides the safest thing for his family to do is to escape France. And so late one night, he and his wife, Marie Antoinette, and their three children um, get into a carriage uh, with a, a nursemaid and a servant, and they start to head for the Austrian border. And if they can make it to the Austrian border, which is where many French nobles are hiding at this moment, and which is also where his wife, Marie Antoinette, is from, then he knows he'll be, he'll be okay, he'll be protected. And from Austria, he can try to redirect a reversal of some of the revolutionary policies that he really didn't approve of um, when he was kind of forced or, or pressured um, to agree to. Of course, though, Louis XVI, being a nice guy but not always the brightest guy, leaves in a giant carriage that's very gilded and golden and beautiful uh, and is moving, very, moving really too slowly as he starts to go towards the Austrian border. And he almost gets there. He almost makes it. But in a small French town, just, just on the French side of the Austrian border, he is stopped. And that town is called Varennes. And so this episode of the king is usually called the flight to Varennes. And so Louis XVI is exiting his carriage. Um, he's often portrayed as, as being very hungry and needing a snack. And so he's stopping somewhere to get a snack. Um, really, he and the, the royal family needed to stop and rest um, for a little while. And so he's walking around. And, and legend has it that he went up to a man and said, hello, I need a snack. And he presented a coin that had his own face on it. Because of course, Louis XVI, monarch of France, is going to have his image on the currency. And the man looked at the coin, legend has it, and looks at Louis XVI and says, oh no, you are the king. What are you doing here? Um, but the, whether or not the, it involved the coin, the king was recognized. Louis XVI, even in his great disguise, was recognized as being the king. And of course, by this point, he had been missing in Paris. People had noticed he had left. And uh, some even blamed Lafayette for kidnapping him. Or for, uh, or, for taking, remove, or for removing the king. And Lafayette says, I really don't know where the king is. And they say, well, we have to find the king. So the king is stopped in Varennes. He is found. And so a big to-do is made about, oh, good, the king was kidnapped. Aren't we glad we found him before the kidnapper took him to Austria? Wouldn't that have been terrible? Well, let's make sure we all escort the king back to Paris where he belongs. And the king is kind of being like, I'm so glad you rescued me as he's seeing Austria get farther and farther and farther away. Uh, and of course, things aren't going to end well for Louis XVI when he gets back to France, because um, as much as I'm sure Louis XVI would have loved to perpetuate the myth that he had been kidnapped, they found papers that he had left in France saying, Dear Austria, I would love it if we could organize a counter-revolution together. Let's talk. I'll be in Austria in a little bit. Love, Louis. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but he left documentation showing that he was indeed planning a counter-revolution uh, and was going to be in league with Austria. And, uh, Austria was not a, a favorite country of France at the moment, and so it really just, it really just uh, pretty much condemned Louis XVI as being someone who was very counter-revolutionary and therefore had to be removed. Now, the decision um, to execute Louis XVI was, a, was, again, a very complicated decision, and I'm not going to, to show all of it in its beautiful um, uh, uh, complications, uh, but uh, Louis XVI was removed as a monarch, one, because he was seen now as an enemy of France, he was a traitor of France, and two, also because if France was going to succeed as a republic, it could not have the stain of monarchy on it anymore. This was, this was one, one school of thought. And several people did not want to execute Louis XVI, many people did want to execute Louis XVI, and when it came to a vote, those who did want to execute Louis XVI edged out just a little bit. Now, of course, as the revolution becomes more radical and begins to do things like kill its own king, um, it becomes very unsafe for any, anybody who, doesn't think th who thinks the revolution has become too radical, like our dear friend Lafayette. Lafayette was not uh, uh, supportive 
of the decision to, to execute the king by any stretch of the imagination. He was not at all uh, uh, in, in league with those who wanted to make the French Revolution more radical. Uh, Louis, uh, Lafayette had, would have been very happy to have a constitutional monarchy. Lafayette was very happy when the, American, when the French Revolution seemed to be borrowing some ideas from the American Revolution or seemed to be affected by the American Revolution. At this point, Lafayette doesn't recognize it anymore, and he knows that he is in danger because he uh, did not support in certain radical measures of the French Revolution, and he decides to flee with his family as well. Unfortunately, before he can flee, he's actually arrested, but he is kept in Holland, and eventually, long story, ends up in an Austrian prison. And so poor Lafayette, who is the great hero of the American Revolution and whom we remember very fondly, spends, spends the vast majority of the French Revolution in an Austrian prison. Um, eventually, he's, he's set free, but he can't return to France yet because Napoleon Bonaparte, by this point, considers him a threat. This is in the late 1790s. And eventually, Lafayette sneaks back into France, much to the anger of Napoleon, but promises he will not challenge Napoleon and decides to retire as a private citizen in France. Um, and that is why when Lafayette returns to America in the 19th century to do kind of a grand tour for a period of about a year, he is so happy to be in America because he knows that in America he is still a great hero, whereas in his home country of France, his legacy has become much more complicated. The, the revolution doesn't want to claim him because he wasn't radical enough, and yet the nobles don't want to claim him because he still wanted to start the French Revolution in the first place. So poor Lafayette, um, in his own country during his lifetime, is kind of stuck in a, in a nebulous, uh, kind of a, a tense, difficult situation. And of course, Louis XVI uh, uh, ends up being beheaded.